Thank you and good afternoon and welcome to the juvenile court courthouse here in Seattle. Uh, we are here not for usually what happens in the juvenile court courthouse, which is usually something where nobody wants to be. We're here today because we want to be with and celebrate the success of our youth in the 2014 Academic Achievement Awards sponsored by the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. My name is Dan Satterberg and I am the prosecuting attorney and this is one of the happy things that I get to do, which is to to work with the teams of people that have helped our students become successful. And you have to wonder, you may be wondering, students, well, why does he care? Well, I will tell you why I care, and then I want you to help me explain why everybody should care about their own academic success. Now, as the prosecuting attorney, I see a lot of tragedy, I see a lot of sad things, I see a lot of hopes and dreams that are destroyed by bad decisions. Uh, and a lot of the common denominators of what I see when people end up, instead of living their dream, they end up in trouble, they end up going to prison, is due to failure in school. And why do people fail in school? Well, there's a thousand different reasons. But sometimes it's because they don't have a team around them to help them, to help them through that tough time. We know when we look at the 18,000 people who are today sitting in a prison cell here in the state of Washington, that three out of four of them dropped out of high school. Three out of four. And so that tells me that keeping young people in high school is an extremely important thing for our entire society. And it's especially important for the individual. But if we know that three out of four people who are in prison dropped out of high school, then we should do something <coughs> about it. We also know that if you drop out of high school, that you're five times more likely to go to prison than if you stay and get your high school degree. That's an amazing statistic, five times more likely to go to prison. If you, go, if you end up going to college, then the chances of you going to prison is almost zero. So it's that important, it's that direct of a protective layer on people. So for people to stay in school is good for all of us. But one of the things that I like to talk to young people about when they're in school is why they should care. And that's why I would like to ask Jordan and Joseph and James, can you come on up here? Come on up around here and help me demonstrate this for the people in our television audience and the other kids. This is what I call the string theory of life. It's a string. So I'm going to have, first of all, let's, inter let's introduce everybody for the, for the camera. Can you, you don't have to talk to the camera. You can talk to that camera. Okay. Can you say your name? I'm Jordan Cox. And you're from the Lake Washington School District? I am. Okay, next. Uh, my name is Joseph Rico Lapin. I'm uh, from Seattle. Seattle, and? James. Uh, I'm Jim Zagato. From? Uh, Lake Washington. Lake Washington. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. So, I'm, this is the string theory, and so, Jordan, if you would hold that end of the okay. string, and James, if you would hold that end of the string, that's a very long string. <laughs> and but let's go, I'm going to have you go underneath it. There we go. So, let's hold it tight. Now, this is, this is the point of the string theory of life. Now, Joseph, I'm going to have you come over here and help help us read what all of these markers are right here. So let's just hold it tight. Life is nice and straight. So this represents a person's lifespan. Let's say, how long do you want to live? Let's say 100 years. This is 100 years. What happens right here? Can you help us read that? Yeah, born. That's the day you're born. And an awful lot happens from the day you're born, and we realize how important all that period of time is. But right about here, what happens? Second grade. Second grade. So that's how much time? How much time before you're in second grade? Usually eight or nine years. Is that about right? Mm -hmm. And then from the time that you're in second grade to what, what does that one say, Joseph? High school senior. You're a high school senior. So that's like another maybe eight years, right? You might 18 when you graduate. So here's this important 18 years, and really your, your super serious school career is from the time that you're, say, in second grade, although it's important to learn a lot of stuff before second grade, but, but that period of time is super important. And that's where a lot of, that's where all your friends are right now, right? You're kind of waiting to graduate from, to be a senior from high school. What can, Joseph, what can happen after? Go to college. You can go to college. And that can be how long, how long is it to get from, being a senior in high school to, to graduating, say, a four-year degree in college, how, how, that's, I just gave you the answer, that's four years. <laughs> but you can actually go on further, right? What does that say? Graduate, Graduate school. You can go to, or you can go to law school like it, I did. You can go become a doctor, get a master's in something. So that's usually about another 
two, three years? So the point of this is that from about second grade to uh, say even going through college is how many years? Let's go from age eight, let's say you're 26. Quick math. Eight. 18. About 18 years of school. That's your career as a student. To go as far as you can in school, it takes you about 18 years. But Joseph, come over here. What happens after this? What happens during all this time? You go to work. You go to work. You go to work. And let's say that maybe you want to what? You want to retire someday? Do you want to work until you, you don't want to work forever? Yeah. You want to retire someday. Let's say 65. So from the time that you're, say, 25 to 65, that's 40 years in there, right? And then if you want to play, you get to play all the way to the end of your string. Take that string off, up, 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 up. You get to play. The point is that the more that you work here, the easier this gets, right? Because the more that you are able to get education, the more you are able to get the job that you want to get up and go to every day, those jobs typically pay more money. Did you know, for instance, that if you graduate from high school, that over your life of work, you'll make a quarter million dollars more than the people who didn't graduate from high school. But if you go to college over this period of work, you're going to make a million dollars more than the people who didn't. And if you go to every, every bit of education you get is more money in the bank so that you can retire and play. And so when I talk to kids, and usually talk to eighth graders about this, because that's when things start to get serious, right? You start to get your permanent record, and, and the things that you do in eighth grade matter because it affects how you're going to graduate from, from school. We talk about this is your career. This is your career as a student. It's not very many years in the context of the rest of this, but it's the most important time. To stay in school and to succeed here makes everything better. All the successful adults I've ever met were also successful students. And that's the string theory of life. Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Now, we have three awards to give out today. Uh, and behind every award is a story. And so I've invited uh, either the team, team member or the student who we're uh, going to uh, recognize to come forward and, and say a few things. Jordan, have you decided to step forward and speak on your own behalf? Well, thank you very much. Why don't you introduce yourself one more time? I'm and Jordan. the floor is yours. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Jordan Cox, and I'm from the Lake Washington School District. I w was on the Becca Bill when I was in junior high, maybe, oh, man, one, two, three, like five years of my life. So I was on the Becca Bill for a really long time, and I never really got the message. I, I, I've came here a million times. I know my way around really well. But I, I ended up agreeing to go to juvie for two days for the truancy issue at school because I just wouldn't go. That was a reality check of a lifetime. So after I went to juvie, a lot changed. I started going to junior high. Even though that's the most important time, I feel like I didn't learn a lot not being in junior high or that time of high school. You learn a lot. But they do have the gateway program at Lake Washington Institute of Technology. So I decided since high school wasn't just the perfect thing for me, I ended up going to the college to get my high school. I went my, to get my GED, and then I am getting my high school diploma, and I'm in the Social and Human Services program at Lake Washington Tech Institute of Technology. So hopefully I'll have my associate's degree in maybe a year and a half, two years from now, and I'm definitely on the road to success, and it, it's important. <laughs> Because it, come on up here, come on up here. Every successful student has That's a team a, behind him. Is this your team? This is my team. All right. They've well, supported Jordan, me the whole way. On behalf of the King County Prosecutor's Office and, and everybody oh, in King you. County, we say congratulations and we're very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. James is next, for also from Lake Washington. 
I'm James Zagato from like Washington School District, and um, I was just not going to school. Nothing really interested me at school. I just, you know, nothing made me happy. I just kind of wanted to stay home, not really do anything. And so I ended up having to go to a uh, thing where they're telling me that if I miss any more days, my parents could get in big trouble because they're not making me go to school. And they couldn't because they had to work. So um, my dad, a little while later, he, um, he quit his job to go to another job. And in between, he was able to get me to school. And that helped me a lot. Um, and right now, his you know, new work schedule, he can still keep on uh, driving to school, which, is, which really helps. But something that would really help what really helped me go to school a lot was also that I just had to have something that interested me at school, something that makes me happy, something that I like to do, and that makes me want to go to school every day. You know, so maybe see my friends one period, I get to do something, you know, an elective, I get to do art or something, any one of those things. It just makes it a lot easier to want to do something at school. Well, congratulations, with me. <laughs> we have a team, Team James, part of the team. Uh, there's a little gift card to Target. Okay. It's our way of saying way to go. Come on. All right, this, this, we got a photo op, and then we'll. You getting ready to grad, graduate from high school? Is that the next goal? Yeah. Yes, he's going to be going to. Juanita. Juanita High School. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Well, well good luck. Let's hear it again for Jim. Better to have somebody tell your story for you. Go right ahead and introduce yourself, please. You want me to speak? Okay. You can go ahead My name is Joseph Rico Lapid. From Seattle. From Seattle. You want to introduce me? <laughs> and this is my counselor, Ken Hui. Hi, I'm Ken. You want me to start off? Or you want to start, start off a little bit, and I'll fi I'll help you finish. Ken. Ken, a little nervous. Proud of. You should be speaking up. <laughs> I'll, I'll start off, and then, when you're ready, then you can kind of fill in. Sure. Okay, so this is the story of Joseph. Um, Joseph, um, his whole team is here um, supporting him. He's, he's also had trouble going to school. He's been involved with the truancy court system for the last two, three years. Um, he wasn't going to school at all. He was staying home. Variety of issues can I share about? Um, due to some hassling and bullying, he developed a lot of anxiety about going to school. He didn't feel comfortable talking with people, so he wasn't able to go to school for two, three years. Until about last year, Rick Maltby, his uh, truancy caseworker, helped him find some alternative programs. That was semi-successful, didn't quite work out. Um, it wasn't until about the last year he really began to kind of get more confidence and speak out and ask his team that he wanted to be back in a regular high school. So this last, just this semester, he started uh, uh, at West Seattle High School, full time. He was only going, before that, he was only going to school like two days a week, two classes at, at a time, and then he just decided he wanted to take the full leap and go five days a week, the full class. And he's been going to school every day. Uh, his anxiety has greatly reduced. He's um, able to kind of talk more, and um, he's got future goals. You want to share your goals? Long term goals? Uh, my goal in the future? is to be a policeman um, to help the community, help people, and to, and <laughs> finish it off for me. Okay, okay. That's awesome, that's, that's, that's awesome, great. that's awesome. So, now, Team Joseph also has a very powerful member, <clears throat> Commissioner Jackie Jeske, who uh, presides here in the uh, juvenile court uh, on the truancy calendar very often, and, and you said you, you're very familiar with, with Joseph's case. So um, Joseph in my book is a star, um, and I just wanna, wanna share with you that this young man has just come such a long way. And um, I was thinking about what I would say when I was looking at the individuals who won awards today, and a quote came to mind to me for Joseph, so I'm just gonna share it. Um, I, think, I think a lot of times in life you need to treat failure like practice shots. Um, and we really learn more from failure than we do oftentimes from our successes. 
but there's someone that really speaks well, I think, about that, and that's Michael Jordan. Some of you may know his name, Michael Jordan. But he uh, was asked once about what made him so successful, and he said that um, he had missed more than uh, 9,000 shots in his career, and he had lost more than 300 games, um, and he had uh, 26 occasions been entrusted with the game-winning shot and failed to make it. Um, and he said, I have failed over and over and over again in life, and that's why I succeed. Mm -hmm. And Joseph is a great example of someone who, he kept coming to court, mm -hmm. he kept trying new things, we never quite could find the right fit for him, but he never gave up, he always showed up, he was always ready to try, um, and you know, finally the last time around, after a lot of, lot of effort, we found a place for him where he felt comfortable, where he could take a step forward, and then he found he could take another step forward. And I am just, I am so proud of this young man's success. He really deserves a round of applause. So I'm gonna ask everybody to let him know. everyone who's on Team Joseph, come on up here. And uh, we're heading to a high school graduation and beyond. One yeah. step at a time. One step at a time. Right. Everybody <laughs> smile. Good picture. Okay, one, one more. One more. Thank you, everybody. So I want to thank everybody who uh, showed up to celebrate uh, success today, and we know that each of these students represents successful students throughout King County, uh, but each of you deserves uh, today's recognition. Uh, thank you to those of you who joined us on television at home. It's been a great day, and uh, we're excited about the future of the students of King County. Thank you very much.